Mine is out of a fee. That's right. <laughs> Taylor? Morning. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you for doing this. No problem. I was excited to talk to you. I'm excited too. I think I was excited because you said something that uh, this would be different from the other ones. Yeah. That you wouldn't exactly be praising God. Yeah. And I thought that was like uh, a genuine thing. Yeah. That maybe we all go through. Yeah. In a real experience. Yeah. So I wanted to hear. I agree. What you have to say. Um. About what? Your life. I just wanna. <laughs> <laughs> no. Something I've always admired about you, and I told you before, but I think you're stronger than you know. I know you know you're strong, but uh, you've been through a lot of stuff. Yeah. I think I've seen you go through some stuff. Yeah. I've yeah, heard you about you did. going through some stuff. You've seen me go through some stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, where do you feel like you find that strength to continue? Uh, well, I guess here's the thing. It's like, I don't necessarily... Go I'll, people do say that to me like frequently I guess like people will say like oh you're so strong you're so strong and sometimes like it's almost like aggravating because it's like okay like I get that you think I am but like I want to die <laughs> you know what I'm saying but it's not like I want to actually die but it's like I don't feel good like this doesn't feel like strength to me this feels like like that's yeah. what, you know, it's like wild it and comfortable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like it doesn't feel like, oh, I'm so strong. You know, like I don't feel like hardcore. Really. You'd rather someone help than call you strong. Well, not even that, but maybe just be like. It's all awesome. I think it's yeah. I think for me, I would rather people be like, it's okay that you don't feel strong. Like it's okay that you feel like a piece of crap and you don't want to do anything right now. Like, that's a normal thing to feel. I think that was why, like, when I started going to, like, therapy and psychiatry, that's what I really liked. And, like, you could say that's, like, oh, it's enabling, like, poor emotions and behavior or whatever. But it wasn't like that because in therapy it wasn't so much like, oh, it's okay you're feeling that way and, like, wallowing in it some more. It's more like, it's okay that you're feeling that way, but, like, how can we move forward now? You know, and um, I I guess like you ask is basically you ask like where I where I find it or like where I I get it and I, to me it just kind of feels like I don't have a choice. Oh, like if I'm being honest, I feel like it's my. <laughs> this is extremely dramatic, <laughs> but I feel like my brain is so black and white thinking, which is not helpful. I don't believe it's healthy, but some people know say I guess it is, but I don't think it's healthy. It's so black and white thinking that I like, I will get so sad or so like bogged down and like overwhelmed and I'll be like, ugh, like I either survive or I die. <laughs> like those are the only two choices in my, in my brain. Like there's, there's like, That's no, right. you know, like there's no other choice. So it's like, I just feel like I have to survive. And so then like, like I feel like, I put on a face though for people like I feel like what people see like just just me being honest like I feel like what people see of me a lot of the times unless you're very close to me I feel like you can like confirm this but you saw like bad parts of me more but I mean like I feel like the parts that people see of me are really only surface I really only let people see a surface level i put on a very happy smiley giggly face mm. and then people leave me alone about it and then i can kind of go in my corner and deal with it and brood about it myself i guess so i don't i don't really know i guess i couldn't say like oh i get strength from anything i don't i'm not i can't say like oh i get strength from god do you think you ever got strength from god yeah but you believed before yeah, i i do I do believe in God. Yeah. I don't. This is kind of probably so bad to say, especially to. Come on. But I believe in God. I believe that God is real, hundred percent. But 
we all know that I struggle since my mom died. Well, that we, we don't all know. Me and you know that I struggle. My thought is... She recently passed away. Yes, my mom recently passed away from a drug overdose of fentanyl in July of last year. So a year, basically a year ago. Like, exactly. And, um... She... My mom had a really... Well, I just had a really weird thought. But my mom had a really... My mom had a really bad life. She... Like, she literally was forced to do drugs by her her family when she was 10 years old so that she wouldn't tell on her brother and sister for doing drugs. So they said, you have to do it so you can't tell on us for doing it. And then my mom's whole life, that's all she knew was drugs. Her, her, her dad literally, like, sold drugs. Like, it, it was insane. You know, just a lot. Like, that's all she knew her whole life. You know, and, and then she thought about God. She talked about God. She believed that God was real. She was scared, afraid of God. She had a fear of God. It, and she was afraid of the devil. She didn't like the devil. She hated the devil. But she just was confused. She 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 didn't know. She didn't know the truth. And I guess if you want to get technical, I think partially me and like my like, I, I don't know about my sisters. Maybe my, I don't know the conversations that my sisters had with my mom. So they probably had lots of sisters, I mean, lost lots of talks about God with my mom, about the technicalities and the details, but I didn't. And I, like even after I went to Teen Challenge, like my mom thought that this, the, the life, that, that the earth that we live on is hell. She thought we were in hell, we're in hell right now. This is hell. And that you like either make it through or like, Jesus decides, like, okay, you had enough, now I'm going to take you, or or you're just stuck here, and then you die, and then whatever. Do you think that shapes some of your beliefs? I don't, no, no, because I remember when my mom told me that, I was like, that's so sad that you think that. Um, but as I get older, I kind of understand why she thought it, but I say all that to say, like, I don't think anybody really took the time to sit down with my mom and explain the true things about God. Like, I could have told, I told my mom, like, no, that's not accurate, but I didn't say, like, no, that's not accurate. Here, what is accurate? And I don't think anyone really, I don't know, obviously, but I don't think anyone really took my mom seriously enough when she said that she wanted to be a Christian, that they took the time to explain to her the real details. And my, to be fair, my mom was not always, like, focusing, paying attention, so it might have seemed like she wasn't really interested too, but I don't think that's the case at all. But I say all that to say that I struggle because I feel like if my mom, if what the church says about people, or at least my church, or what I believe the church says about people, is if you die of a drug overdose, you go to hell. Like you're dying in sin, literally. Like it, sin, whatever. I don't, I don't know if it's sin. I don't know, whatever, it's bad, so it's sin, but, like, you're literally dying in your sin, like, there's no, like, the church would say she didn't have a good life, she wasn't saved, she didn't know the truth, she is going to go to My mom did get saved, unless they're once saved, always saved people, and then they would believe that my mom is in heaven. What do you believe? And that's what I would like to, I don't, mm, I wouldn't say once saved, always saved, I wouldn't go so far as to say that, but I, my what I okay what I want to believe what Taylor wants to believe and what I feel like Taylor has experienced of God is that he's loving and he's kind and he sees me like El Rai that's like literally my favorite name of God ever because it's literally the God who sees me it's literally my favorite it just makes me know that I am seen what I felt at the time I am seen, I am cared about, like literally, I, even though there's billions of people in there, somehow, some way, God does still see me. I don't know how, I don't know why, but I felt that he did at the time. And, uh, um, so you believe God knows your heart? I, that's what I would like to believe. I would like to believe that he sees you, he knows you, like, even though my mom did have this, to the outside eye, have this bad life she lived a life of sin 
I, I would like to believe that God knew that my mom had a really good heart and just the world is so effed up that like she just did the freaking best she could with what she had and tried her best and like it won but like I don't feel like even if God isn't that way if my mom is in hell I do still believe God is real but I don't know if I want that God right because and I say that very carefully and I believe that it I can't say I believe that God knows my heart because I don't know I don't know anymore I'm very confused and I know the Bible says that confusion is from the devil but it, I'm very very confused and I think like I don't have any doubts that God is real I just don't know who he is. Can you remember a time when you weren't confused? Or when things were more clear? Yeah, but um, I was also in an environment. I know I've watched you share your testimony before, before I even knew you. Mm -hmm. And it was very powerful. Just yeah. walking by. I remember I snuck in just to see it. And I got in trouble for it later. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, and it, it was. Uh, it grabbed my attention because I knew you believed what you were saying at the time. Yeah. And I know I've gone through periods of doubt too. Yeah. But so no, I know that it was more clear at one point. But we were also in an environment like you said. And here's what I'll say. I just was talking to my friend Jess, actually, the other day because she's like, she's just gotten like really heavy back into the Lord, like recently on her own and is like doing a lot of things. I'm just like seeking God and getting close to him and she believes that she just had like a crazy experience with him all really great stuff and I listen to her I don't listen to anybody like I'm not ever gonna be like don't talk to me about God well maybe I will but I don't feel that way right now <laughs> but like you know and I listen and I was just thinking you know like when I was at Team Challenge I, were, I remember like sobbing crying over my parents like begging God to please save them, please get them to be clean, please help them to to see that the lives that they're living are good. I don't, you know, like please before they die, please before they die. And I remember like Pastor McLean being like, you have to let them go, you have to let them go. Like this, is, it's it's not good for you. Like you're not, like it's not going to be good for you. And I never really understood what he was talking about. I thought that just meant like stop praying for them like not stop praying for them but like there's nothing you can do to change the situation so just like let them do what they're gonna do and then you do what you're gonna do like that's what I thought that meant but I think now that meant what's happening and that's like after my mom died I obviously went to the mental hospital I was there for 10 days I don't remember anything well I I don't remember anything for a couple days before the mental hospital, a couple days into the mental hospital, and then I randomly like came back to like three days in or something like that. Uh, they drug tested me, everything was fine, no drugs, no anything, just, I just couldn't take it. I just mentally could not take it. There were some other things going on like with the blood clots that I had in my legs I had to get emergency surgery what did you know about that I didn't know oh yeah so I had chronic blood clots I can show you the I have the scars but I had chronic blood clots in both my legs from my ankles all the way up to my upper V cape up so almost to my lungs um and it I gets found really serious when it's in the lungs right you could die and uh, when I found out, like, I was in excruciating pain for, like, two weeks before I went to the mental hospital. I could not walk. I couldn't do anything. I kept going to the ER, and then every time I would go, they'd give me muscle relaxers, and then just send me home. And they never really, like, knew, understood what was going on. And then when I was in the mental hospital, my legs started swelling. And I, I saw the nurse. And I told her, I was like, I recently just started taking birth control again. She was like, uh, we need to get you to the hospital because I think you might have blood clots. And I had to get emergency surgery that night while I was in the mental hospital. 
And then because I came from the mental hospital, I wasn't allowed to have my phone, so I couldn't call my family to tell them I was about to get surgery in Grand Rapids. Oh. And nobody could come see me. So I didn't get to tell anybody until like, literally like right before I went to surgery. I like was throwing a fit and I was like, I don't even care if I look crazy right now because like, I feel crazy right now. <laughs> Basically like I'm, in, I'm just like, I'm in the mental hospital, I have blood clots, like I'm just trying to like, get my head right basically. But then they let me call my sister, but still nobody could come see me. I had to get surgery. I was there for two days by myself. And then they came and got me when I was discharged. And then I didn't have to go back to the mental hospital. They just let me go from there. But, um... Do you feel better? Or do you uh, feel like you're getting better? Just now. Yeah. Uh, I, I went to the mental hospital in September last year. And I feel like just like this month I don't know maybe like maybe like I take that back maybe like beginning of July I'll say so like a full month mm -hmm. I started to feel like I can clean my house I can have a job I don't really haven't had a job for like since January I had one for like a month and a half or something two months but the last I couldn't keep it. Just, I hated it, and you could tell. And they said that they were, they said they were downsizing, but I think it just wasn't a good fit. Oh, so. People have moments where they like feel like God is calling them, you know, like these big life moments. Or when they look back, they're like, oh, I can see how God was like trying to pull me close. You feel like that's happened in the last month, or maybe even prior to that. I feel like maybe, maybe if he is like trying to help me or like is helping me or is doing something, it's like in enough of a roundabout way that I can't tell. Have you ever felt that way at any point in your life? Yeah, I felt I felt really close to God. Uh, like a lot, I guess, in my life. But it just all feels kind of tainted because I feel like I'm a little bit of a chameleon mm. in a way that I can just kind of like do what I have to do in that situation to get through what I have to get through. And I genuinely, like, there's no doubt in my mind that God helped me get through my addiction. I know that I could ne never stop doing drugs by myself, ever. I know that. I know that for a 100% fact, truly. Six months into Teen Challenge, I still was thinking, once I leave here, I'm just going to go back to drugs. Why am I here? Why am I wasting everybody's time? So I know that without that, there was no way I would have gotten clean. No way. And I do think that there was a lot of things that I healed from and dealt with and grew up in at Teen Challenge. Uh, but I also think I left there with some extra issues and some extra laws that I didn't need. Mm. Your situation is pretty unique and the things you've struggled with. Yeah. What would you tell someone who's going through something that you are? Like, could you give them any advice or any encouragement? Uh, the only thing that I can say, it just feels like extremely hypocritical because it's like what I do, but just like don't isolate. I don't think that I like, I don't think besides you today, genuinely, I don't think I've seen a person outside my family in at least a year, maybe two.
to feels like a long time, but could be too. Uh, and I did that a lot because of obviously the stuff that went on with my daughter and her dad in that situation and I felt betrayed by a lot of people because they were speaking about that situation behind my back when they didn't know it um, and so I cut people off because of that and then just kind of tried to and was fine and was fine and totally happy by myself for a long time but then it's like once you're not anymore kind of screwed <laughs> at least you don't really have the option of like reaching back out or i mean you do but it's not all it's not like usually received and sometimes i don't really mean it like i might want friends but not friends like that yeah i know sometimes for me it's been hard to be around other people even people who i know love me mm -hmm. like painful like, I feel like I'm the only one who feels that. Do you feel like it's hard? Like, it's painful to be around other people, and that's why you isolate? It's really uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder why that is. Just because I go through it. I too think often. I just feel, for me personally, I just feel like, like, you guys don't get it. Yeah. You know, like, it just feels like people want to, pretend like they know or they Ugh. and it's like you guys just don't freaking get it and I, I don't mean it and like that sounds so negative it sounds so like pessimistic and like frick everything but I I just mean like you guys don't know what real life is you have no idea Yeah, I think I've always, like, not admired, but, like, wondered how people can go about life and, like, get a job. Like, I've looked up to that because I've never been able to, like, be comfortable in that. Yeah. And yeah, we have our own struggles. Yeah, I think, um, I've gotten a lot better. And this is, like, goes back to, like, the communion and, like, masking thing, I think. I think it's really, now that I feel like I learned this at Teen Challenge, I, and not in a negative, I don't mean that negatively, I feel like it's a good thing, because it's like professionalism, you know, like, even if you're uncomfortable around people, you have to be, like, friendly, <laughs> you know, you have to be, like, yeah. welcoming, like, even when you don't want to be, uh, like, especially when you're intake, you know, like, you have to interact with people you maybe don't even want to interact with, you know, like, but you just have to do it, and you have to be friendly and act like you're enjoying it, and, like, even if you're just not but like it's good to learn how to do that because like sometimes in like you have to freaking just suck it up and do it you know but at the same time like i feel like i've noticed that like i notice that's easier to do like instead of like show you who i really am or like get anywhere deep with you for you to be able to use it against me later like let me just show you this Taylor. Yeah. This like, happy Taylor that has no worries. You know? Right. You did intake. I did intake. Yeah. That was cool being a lifeline for someone. People would call and it'd be their worst moments ever. And you got to be the one on the other end of the call. What was that like? That was cool. I mean, I... Intake was a little bit of a whirlwind for me. I really loved intake. I loved the feeling of it. I loved like the, like, I know, I know, I know, I'm just being honest. <laughs> I loved like the. You're saying it came with a certain. It came with a feeling of importance. Yeah. Okay. I feel Purpose. important. Yeah. yeah. Like, and it, not like, oh, look at me, I'm so cool. But like, I'm doing something important. Like that kind of. Cause like yeah, you know, the money is not money. It's not like pouring it from money. Yeah, they gave you two nickels, didn't they? <laughs> I got two. I don't know. It's not like we're making bank off it, you know, like <laughs> buying 
if we were saying this or something, but no, like, it just felt good. It did. It felt good. It was good. It was good. But sometimes it also felt like, why would you ever trust me to do this job? Yeah. <laughs> like, but they trust you because you went through it, right? Well, of course. No, I don't mean like bad on them. I don't mean like I did so bad, like their mistake. I mean like, I felt sometimes like, well, what the frick am I doing? <laughs> like, what, what am I supposed to be doing? Like, sometimes like I felt like this girl is sitting here telling me how she just wants to run away and all these girls are b-words and she doesn't want to wait this quiet poop for two days and I kind of agree with her yeah. <laughs> and what am I supposed to say like oh just pray about it you'll get through it you know like what was I supposed to do and I think the reason why a lot of the girls didn't like me is because I would just be honest with them yeah and just be like and I remember like I don't know if you remember this but when I was doing my sound classes and I was going to potentially be a pastor uh, and finished all my first classes and then I was like preaching at the girls center uh, some Sunday nights uh, not all of them. oh wait well maybe I'm tripping it was whatever when it was just at the girls center and just the girls I can't remember when they started remember when they started like separate I don't remember when you because I worked there so long Same. yeah <laughs> like I don't know when time foods overlap but you got but, to preach yes for sure and I remember some of the girls saying to me and I got to like teach some of the classes and I remember some of the girls saying to me like I like you teaching this because like you will say like you're That's honest yeah. like you'll say like yeah dude I still deal with this yeah dude like I still trip about stuff like that like yeah I still feel this way but like I just deal with it and like move on you know like and th or sometimes like you just don't deal with it and you still move on or whatever but like I do think that's that's why some people liked me is because I would just be honest but at the same time like I don't know it all kind of feels like like, I remember when I was in Teen Challenge, I used to say, like, oh, when they talk about me on drugs, it feels like that's a different person. It feels like, I don't even know, I'm like, it's just somebody I knew. I'm just talking about her, like, I feel that way when I think about Teen Challenge now. I feel yeah. like, I feel like I've been 70 different people in my life. Oh, I know that person very well, the me on drugs, you know? Especially right now, still, like... I was gonna pause it, but I don't know oh. how to edit, so. Oh, you're okay. <laughs> you're okay. It's just my apartment, lady. What's being a mom like? Oh, jeez. It's the best. She it's know, the best. You know what I really want to know about? The first moment you saw your daughter. Because pe people have talked about this overwhelming rush. Did you have that, or like? I was terrified. Happen? Oh. <laughs> when, I, well, because when she came out, she wasn't crying. And I was always like, 
they say like if they're not crying, there's something wrong. Do they smack? Well, <laughs> yeah, they backhanded her. <laughs> no, they. Uh, she just like I guess she had swallowed like a little bit of like stuff when she's coming out or whatever. And so she was like, she was fine, but they just had to like suction it out. And so I kept asking like, is she okay? Is she okay? She's not crying. She's not crying. And nobody was answering me. And so I knew like they were trying to figure it out. But then they figured it out really fast and she was fine. And I just, to be honest, like it, it felt like normal. You know, like it felt like, oh, like of course this is what, what's gonna happen you know like I don't know like yeah it's always been there? you just kind of kind of I guess like it didn't feel like anything extra that I remember I, I just like after we got home like I know I was extremely depressed like I had really bad postpartum depression like really bad but like I never was like it wasn't like I didn't love her like that kind of like because I know like some people have like the postpartum where it's like it's hard for them to connect with their baby and I didn't have that I just was more like I was just I'd cry about everything I just felt like nothing was I felt like nothing was good enough nothing was going to be good enough nothing was going to be okay she wasn't going to be okay all this bad stuff was going to happen to her like I felt that I felt that and I I sometimes think that I like manifested that I, I truly believe that. I thought about it so often that I somehow like created the thought in the universe and I know like people do not believe in that crap but like I just feel like I I truly thought of like I would think about the most freaked up stuff like what if she gets molested? What am I gonna do if she gets molested? Like how am I gonna protect her from being molested? Like that's all my mind thought about was like how am I gonna stop all this bad stuff from happening there? Cause she's just a little girl and like it's gonna happen and how am I gonna stop it? Like I would think about it all the time. Like it, not just like, <laughs> not just that thought. Like it's not like I obsessed on that thought, but it was like a bunch of different, like what if she gets picked on? Like what am I gonna do? What if she cries? What if she wants to hurt herself? What if she, like all these thoughts of like what I went through when I was little. Like I was like, what if she feels that dude? Like I can't protect her from that feeling mm -hmm. and I don't know why I obsessed over that so much like I'm kind of over it now I do still I, I definitely because of the situations still think about that but it's not so much like what am I gonna do what am I gonna do it's more like well we'll figure it out you know like, and then when something did happen you feel like you caused that by your own fault. It, yeah, it felt like oh I gosh, put I so this. much thought into it and obsessed over it so much that like I created the atmosphere for it to happen. Yeah, but sometimes I think about winning the lottery and I've never won. <laughs> and I can think about it. Yeah, but all how the much time. do you think about it? Do you think about it all day, every day? Every time you look at the TV, do you think about winning the lottery? Cause it's like every time I looked at my child, I was thinking like, dude, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? I've heard people talk about though, that's like the biggest sacrifice they can make is like submitting their child. Like, or you know, not sacrificing, they're like giving it over to the world in a way. Uh, well, probably, I mean, I'm sure, I mean, I don't know. I guess maybe I haven't like had the conscious thought of like I'm gonna let the world do what it wants with my Maybe you that's know, what like, Pastor McLean meant when he told you about your parents to kinda give that before God or something. Yeah. Not like Yeah, I just I guess I just don't know. Like Will you share Jesus with your daughter? Or like will you talk to her about God? Oh so? yeah, for sure. She goes to church right now and my sister and stuff like that and uh, cause I'm not currently going to church but uh, and she loves church she loves church she likes to talk about Jesus she prays I'm, I would never be like no we don't really know who Jesus is do we Violet like I would never say that to her like if she loved Jesus like I'll be like that is freaking awesome like good for you kid like and if she wanted me to go to church I would go to church with her like 
I mean, there would be nothing, it wouldn't be any, it's not like that, it's just like, I don't personally know how I feel. Mm. And I am never, I would never like hold that against her. And I would never like keep that from her, like, oh, we don't talk about you. Or I'm so mad at Jesus, so you don't get to talk about it. Or like, so I'm not gonna like tell you about it. Like, yeah, I'm out. I mean, I, would, I mean, we went to church for a while, and then she still goes with my sister now. I just don't go with her anymore. But, um, yeah, I have Bible still. I have, I have my some of my studies Bible stuff. You ever think about verses, or does anything ever pop in your head? Where, like you're reminded of something, like yeah, dang that verse. Like, yeah, I think about verses and stuff like that all the time, but not like it's not like I'm just cleaning my dishes and then like a Bible verse right pops in my head. It's like somebody says something that then reminds me of a Bible verse, you know, like, it's never like, oh, just randomly, I feel like, oh, I, that loving Bible verse, <laughs> you know, it's never like that. <laughs> Are there anything that in life that has surprised you? Maybe for the good and for the bad? Uh, yeah. Um... And I know that's a hard question, just off the top of your head. No, uh, I, I'm very much surprised by how much you actually do not know people. Oh, interesting. That's a bad one. Like, you think you know, or like you think like, I used to think like, you, I will always know when someone's drunk. I will always know that. There will never be a time that I won't know that someone's drunk. There's definitely been many times that someone was drunk right next to me for a very long time and I had no clue. Or, you know, that people can really just tell you anything and you'll just believe it because it's not like you ask people for proof of every single thing they tell you. You know, you can't do that. And so it's kind of like, and I know how much I hide of myself to people. And I don't mean like, I feel like I sound kind of like a psychopath, but I don't, I don't mean like, you don't. I am, I'm like, I never let people know the true me. I just mean like, enough to like be like, I know what you do when you get home from work. Like, I don't let anybody know me enough to be like, I know that Taylor likes this kind of yogurt, and I know that she likes to do this thing, and I know that if you say this to her, she'll laugh, and I know that if you say this to her, she'll cry, and I know that if you go and do this, she'll be so happy, and if you do this, she'll be sad. You know, like, I don't let anybody get that much information about me anymore. Because I've experienced how people use that information, or how people hide their own information to hurt you, I guess. And that's kind of disturbing. Hmm. But good things that I've realized are that have surprised me, I guess, um, are just like, um, you know, things with Violet. Like, I saw a five month old that had been literal and like every single odd against her like survive and thrive and be determined and happy and like literally not give a crap like she's literally so happy so happy like so happy she like i mean she's little she's a little girl so she's got an attitude like stuff like that but i mean like she doesn't be like you know like she has to do hard stuff she it has hard stuff like, she had seizures for the longest time. I've never had a seizure in my entire life. And she didn't be like, Ma, poor me, why do I have seizures? Like, partially because she probably doesn't really know how to, like, articulate that. But also, like, she could just cry. If that's how babies communicate, that they don't feel good, that they don't like something, they cry. She's never done that. She's never just sat there and cried. She's just always been determined and, like, with her therapies, things that were so hard for her, things that she she can't she can't do, she had to relearn how to do, she just did, and didn't care 
You didn't complain and be like, oh, this is too hard. I'm not gonna do it. You know, like, and she's a baby. She's allowed to say that and do that. And she's, you know, like, it's so crazy. Like, it, it's so baffling to, like, watch that and then be like, and I don't want to go to work tomorrow. And I feel like, frick my life. And she's doing this and, like, <laughs> everything's great. You know? Like, how can I be so annoying? <laughs> you know? Like, how annoying of you? Like, Ew, how privileged of you to be like, ugh, I have to go make money tomorrow. Ugh, like, okay. Sorry you have to get up early, like, big freaking meal. This kid has to learn how to walk again, like what? Has yeah. to learn how to talk again, what? Do you ever think about yourself as a kid when you look at her? I do. And I heard something like, Somebody, somebody, what did he say? It was like, when you look at, like, when you, like, you get so emotional, like, when you look at, like, pictures of yourself when you're little, because you see everything good about yourself. Mm -hmm. Because, like, you realize, like, you were just an innocent little kid, like, you didn't have. So you see all the good things about yourself, and, like, those are still things that are in you. Because you're just an adult now, you're just not little, you know? And, um, uh, and when I, like, I will look at Violet and I would sometimes just, like, I just start crying. And it's, like, and not because I'm sad, but it's just because, like, I just think, like, you're so great and you love me. And, like, I feel like such a, like, and I'm such a piece of crap. But, like, he, it's, it's still capable for, like, I guess, okay, as a mother, I think a lot of us feel like we're just not good. Like we don't do enough. We don't love them enough. We don't play enough games with them. We don't go outside with them enough. We don't cook them good enough food. We're get, making them unhealthy. We're angry. We're yelling at them, whatever, more than we should, whatever. And, and then, like, she'll come here like i will do something and i'm like man i'm a piece of crap for doing that and she'll be like i love mommy i love mommy i give mommy a kiss are you good are you good are you good like and she's so loving i'll just look at her and i'll just like be like, crying like get teary eyed because i'm like why the frick do you love me so much dude? like i don't like i'm such a piece of crap to you uh, like i literally take care of you and i barely do it and you just love me so much for doing the bare minimum for you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I feel like that's how every relationship should be. I feel like that's how your friendships should be. And people just aren't like that. Do you feel like a closer connection? I know your mother has passed away, but your connection with Violet, do you get some insight on how your mom might have been with you? I, it helped me to, feel like I know my mom was doing the best she could. Yeah. I don't think my mom didn't love me. I don't feel like there's not a single day that I'm like, man, my mom just did not give a crap about me. My mom was not a good mom. I never think of that. Because I just realized like she didn't know what the crap she was doing. Yeah. Like she was just doing the best that she could and I know she loved the crap out of me. Like maybe in ways that people would be like that's really freaked up that she did that why did she give you drugs that's messed up but i think in her mind that's how she knew she got happy dealt with things felt better yeah and i don't think she was ever trying to hurt me like i don't ever think there was a thought in her mind that was like i want my daughter to be addicted to drugs forever <laughs> I don't, i'm not addicted to drugs forever but like I, I I understand now and I, more when I was like I never I never felt like my mom didn't love me even when like I, she really didn't pay attention to me when I was little like I never was like why doesn't my mom love me or pay attention to me I never felt that way like for a second and I felt like maybe my dad did but like didn't 
I don't, and I don't feel like he didn't like me either though. Like that's the thing is I never had like, I never had like anger at my mom and dad for my life. Like I never felt angry with them and maybe because I did drugs and that's why, like maybe even before I became a parent and I did drugs, maybe that's why I understood and was never angry with them because I understood like drugs are crazy and like it yeah. doesn't matter how bad you don't want to do them, you just keep doing them anyway and like yes you do love people around you but yes you freaking hurt the crap out of them for no reason because you're selfish, you know like but I know that you still love them. It's not a lack of love for people. It's a lack of like self-control for yourself. You know, like, I, I, so I never, I never dealt or struggled with like not understanding my mom. Maybe when I was like really little, or maybe like when I just found out she was doing drugs when I was like 16 and I found out she was doing coke. Maybe I like thought it was weird, but I was always felt comfortable enough to ask my mom like do you feel this way do you not care and then just believe her answer you know what was that like when you found out she was doing drugs uh well i had heard it everybody told me that my parents did drugs i just never believed them because i never saw it and i just thought like the way they acted was like just normal for people i didn't know i was like drug addicts to act like that you know until like i got way older and then I was like oh okay some of that behavior is not normal you yeah. know and and uh, I never like it was never um, uh, wait what was this one? do you think there's anything that uh what were you just what did you just ask me I was asking what it was like when you found out your mother oh close. yeah so I never I I was I it was like I was definitely bummed because I was like, crap, it's true. Like all this stuff that people say about my parents is true. But like, I it never made me feel like I'm less than because my parents do drugs, you yeah. know? Yeah. I felt less than because of my own stuff. Or maybe like indirectly it made me feel less than, but like, I don't think I ever felt less than because of my parents. I think I felt less than because of my peers around me made me feel like I should be less than because of my parents and because I was poor and stuff like that. I, didn't, I was never, like, my mom and dad, like, in my lifestyle didn't make me feel bad. Cause I, my sisters used to say, like, oh, I, was in, I would be embarrassed to invite friends over. And I would never feel embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. I literally didn't care until I got older and people made me feel like I should care about it, yeah. you know? And that's what I mean. Like, I feel like the whole world issue is just a people issue. It's just people. You know, people are crappy and not kind and not genuine and don't care. I think people really don't care. Yeah. I think they like to say they do because it makes them feel better. I don't think they really care. Yeah, how much do they really care? What do you think would have to happen? to clear up some of those thoughts or doubts you have about God. Do you think there's anything that would... Somebody would just have to take the time to sit with me. And I know, I know I'm not gonna get the answers out. I know I'm never gonna know if my mom is in heaven or in heaven. I know I'm never gonna know. the things that I want to know. But I think somebody could help me put together the pieces that I have left to figure out what I want to do with the information. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, I don't I just don't know what to do with the information that I have. I don't know how to like sort through it. I don't know how to like say like, okay, yes, this is right. This is true and this is not. I don't know how to separate my feelings from like what might be accurate. 
because like my mom isn't the only thing that I struggle with. Like I struggle with thinking that gay people go to hell. I don't think gay people go to hell. I don't think that. I I really don't think that. Uh, I don't think that God. I don't think that God intervenes as much as people want to believe that He does. I think that He literally gave the devil dominion over the world for a reason. I, not to just intervene every five seconds because people want him to. Like that's not the point of the devil having rule over the earth. Even 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 the devil had control over the earth when Jesus was on the earth, so why would that be any different now? Can I tell you what I believe? Yeah. I believe that once Christ died on the cross, he took back dominion of the earth. And I think we're in a period of understanding that. And that like even today the devil doesn't have rank. And that Christ sits on the throne. That's what I believe. And I also believe that because we sin, that's not who we are. And that say you were driving. Say I was driving. And say I was perfect, you know. And there's like some guy cuts me off and I get really angry. And I like swear it's something. I sin, you know. And in that moment I die. The same like logic that people say like your mom died in sin. If I died in that moment, technically I died in sin. And I believe God's bigger than that. And I genuinely believe. Yeah, but to the outside eye, you have all these good. You're good, right? My mom wasn't good. Yeah, but thank God we're not the judge, you know. Mm -hmm. And that God's ways are above ours, and that He has, He sees. And I, I told you before, I think that we haven't seen God's kindness yet. And his love. And you know, maybe we've seen a fraction of it. I think what messed me up so bad is I remember like going in to the 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 cemetery. My mom's not buried, she was creepy. She wanted to be creepy. But I remember going to the cemetery and oh, thinking about it, even like just oh, it freaks me out. My nephew who is like just turned 13. I mean 12. 12. Literally sobbing. Terrified that my mom went to hell. Why would God want a child to feel like to be worried about that? Like I understand like everybody has an obligation to be concerned about our loved ones point to hell. I get that. That's what God feels like when we do things that we do. But like, why is that okay for a child to be heartbroken? It's not for him to worry about. It's not for him to think about. But like, why does... I know why the church says the things that they do, because they want to protect you from sinning. But I feel like some things are just so drilled into our heads that we really have no clue. My sister said to him, which is a fair thing to say, but we never know if God revealed himself to her who could have given her a last chance, which I believe my mom would have taken, which probably a lot of people would have taken that. But, and so that like helped him But I just feel like, why, why can't, I just, I don't know, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I think I want things to be more clear, but I know they never will be, so it's like I mark that, that thing, out. and it's like I want somebody to talk to me, but I know I'll always find a reason why I don't agree with it, you know, or I know, like, the best thing ever would be if he could just let me know, you know, but I know that's never going to happen. So I think I just, like, I mean, like, I've been thinking, um, lately, like, something I've been struggling with, I'm sure it's this is like a stage of grief and someone's gonna be like, oh, you're in the stage or something stupid, but like, 
I just feel like I keep thinking what like people say. But the eye like, oh, I felt my mom. Or I saw this thing and I thought of my mom. Or I saw this thing and it made me think of my mom. Or I went this place and I felt her and I feel like everything's gonna be okay. Or I went here and God spoke to me and made me feel like everything's okay. I feel like I have a God in me. So to me, it kind of feels like he's saying, like, well, screw you. Like, I don't care if you know or you don't know. And that kind of makes me feel like, well then what is the point of me suffering about it? You know, like, look, I feel like, obviously I didn't die for Jesus. Okay, like I didn't die on a cross like Jesus did for me. Uh, so I can't say like I've given all of these things But at some point it's like How much do you want from me before you give me some kind of something? I just feel like it's not fair But I don't <laughs> I don't not believe in him. I don't I don't think he's evil obviously like I don't think he's evil but I just don't know if he's nice I don't know if he cares as much as I thought he did I don't know if he sees me as much as I thought he did but like I'm not willing to give up either so I don't really know I don't maybe I won't know until that thing happens I don't, I don't deny that I feel like there's some kind of point or purpose to what I'm going through and what I've been through, but I don't know if it's like this big, huge, in front of thousands of people thing like people told me it would be. Yeah. You know? For some reason, I just thought of that, um, Genesis 50, 20, have you ever heard of that or something? Like what the devil intended for mm -hmm. harm, God would use for good. Mm -hmm. And it made me think about, what's the guy's name, Joseph? I don't know, he was in a prison, and then his brothers came later. Or like, they sold him to slavery. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder how long he was in that same period of like, dude, I'm in slavery now. And like, when he was able to look back. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the only thing I can think of when I think about the things you're saying, because I wish I had some... That's pretty crazy that you say that. Because... When Violet was going through all of her stuff, like, the very, like when we were in 2020, like, the very first beginning, I have, like, a, I have, if I can... I have a notebook that I literally wrote in it, God is teaching me to be like Joseph. Whoa. Yeah. And I can't, I have to find the, the thing, the notebook, because I wrote of like exactly why I felt that way. But I think I felt that way because like so many people were saying things about Joseph like number one like the is the wife she's like he raped me and he's like what the frick no I did not like or he tried to or whatever and he's like no but they still put him in jail anyway yeah and I think at that time I was feeling like dude so many things happened to Joseph like just constantly like one every night like he thought he was getting good and then they, like, he thought it was, oh, I'm in with the king. And it's like, nope, you're not. No, you're not in with the king, but you're actually in jail now for the, ever. Yeah. He was there forever. And I remember 
I like thinking about that and feeling that way at that time, but it was like a long time since I thought that uh, you just reminded me of that. So that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, I've had periods of you just don't know how it's gonna play out. Yeah. I think I'm in that now too. Yeah. And I think we're always in that right now. I think that's like why they say like it doesn't matter how old you get and nobody actually knows what the frick we're doing. Like everybody <laughs> pretends they know what they're doing but nobody actually knows. I think that's like actually accurate. Like I think Yeah. Like definitely when I was seventeen I would think like at thirty years old oh, no I would have it all figured out. Like no, I'm 30. I'm not even like halfway figured out. Like it's insane. I'm more confused now than I was at 17. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh my God, that's good, Lord. That's good. That is rich. That's right. <laughs> Taylor, all right. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. I think a lot of people will relate with you. Maybe. And I know I relate with you. It might be like, she's the Debbie Downer, right? No. Why is she here? I think that, um, you know, I'll never feel the things that you feel. Or like the situations. But I know I feel the similar emotions, I guess. Yeah. I don't know how to say it, but I'm here for you. <laughs> you know I love you and care for you. Yeah. And always will. And I've admired things about you. I've shared your strength. Even though you don't want to hear it. I didn't mean it like that. I mean, I don't want you to ever say that. It's my... Sometimes it doesn't feel like strength. Sometimes it feels like burden. Is there anything you want to end on? Or anything else you want? Um. Did you guys do lift-ups? At the women's center, we always did lift ups. Like, hey, I want to lift this. We were not person. that nice. You guys were nice. The girls are weirdly competitive with each other, don't you know that? Interesting. It's very weird, and I don't like it, but it's true. People kept making fun of me that I have no girls on here. <laughs> Didn't you? I've, I've had a few, yeah. No, I always hear from them. Anyways. <laughs> I always hear from who? <laughs> People just telling me I need to. Anyways, thank you, Taylor. You're welcome. I appreciate it. I'll be here. Hopefully, we'll, we'll do this again. Yeah. Down the road. You're going to be the fan favorite. Yeah, and they'll be like, get specific about your mental hospital stay. And I'll be like, okay, let's get down to the grippy socks. I know people will relate to that. And oh. I know people have been through it also. Yeah, I'm not worried. It, so. I, it, the mental hospital was honestly great. Like, I tell people that, I'm like, it was not bad, but I don't know. It was actually very nice. I've been to countless rehabs, and there's always grape juice, and I enjoy that. This was better than rehab. Yeah. You get more free time. People are weirdly less, like, concerned about your, like, <laughs> what you're doing. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're just being, like, fidgety because you're, like, ADD. It's not like you're fidgety because you're, like... <laughs> they come off. So it's very different, yeah. It's like they just like accept it instead of like look at you all weird, you know? It's nice. I think I like sat there and brushed my hair for like two hours in the middle of a class. Interesting. Yeah. All right, Taylor. Yeah. Thanks again. I really appreciate it. Yeah. I know it's gonna help you. And it helped me. I love doing this. Did it help you learn? It did. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>